My name is Andrew Hewat. I'm up here at Wildlife Control Supplies today, uh, dyeing and waxing some traps. Um, I'll explain to you a little bit about my setup. This is my dye pot right here. Um, I've got this packed full of footholds and body grippers right now. Um, you fill it up with water. You want to use one pound of dye for every five gallons of water. Um, took me a little while to get this heated this morning because it was pretty chilly. Um, it was about 31 degrees when I got this going, so it did take a little while to get going. Um, you want to put your trap when you want to put your traps in before the water gets hot. You want to pack it all in cold. Um, add your dye. Um, you don't want to boil the water. You want to get it up to just below the boiling point. You can see the steam coming off this bucket right now. There's really no movement on the water. It's just kind of just kind of simmering. Um, you want to leave them in there for about, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how rusty the traps are. Um, new traps uh, take the dye a little differently than older traps do. Um, the older, you know, rusty traps like this will always take dye better than a newer trap. Plus, the newer traps, they have a little bit different of a steel in them. So sometimes you got to dye and wax them a couple of times um, before they really take. Um, I adjust all my traps before I dye them. Um, these are just some 110s that I have. These are the last of them. Um, as you can see, I, you know, just a regular 110, I put a teardrop. I, I clip the chain off it. I put teardrops on them. I put a swivel on it and clip my chain back to it. That's how I do all my conibears, every conibear. I wax everything. I dye and wax everything. So, um, let me show you a little bit on how we do this. You want to take your traps, um, footholds, you want to put a nail between the jaw before you, before you do anything. Um, you want the dye to get inside, um, same with when you wax them. You want the wax to get in between the jaws. Um, you want to be careful doing this because this water is hot and it will burn you. As you can see, I'm wearing gloves. Um, you just want to take them and lower them in very slowly, completely submerge them in the water. And I got a rubber glove on so I can kind of, you know, I, I recommend wearing rubber gloves. You know, you, you put them in there like that and you leave them for about an hour. Just kind of, you know, let them, just let them simmer. I've already got some footholds in here that I can pull out to show you guys. These have been in here, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I got some one and a halfs um, that I just, you know, you shake them off a little bit. Um, these are some one and a halfs. I just, that have probably been in there. I don't know, they've been in there 45 minutes to an hour. Um, these were brand new springs on them that I just recently put on. That's why they're not black like the rest of the trap. Um, they'll darken up a little bit when you get them in the wax. So you want to take them out of the dye. You want to shake them a little bit. And then just bring them over and hang them on a hook for a little while. Let them dry off. Um, you just hang them there. Let them dry. You know, air, you know, air dry. And uh, before you dip them in the wax. Um, once those are dry, we'll get back at it. And I'll explain the wax a little bit more. Anymore. All right, we're back. Um, we're, here, we're over here at our waxing station. Um, first, let me talk a little bit about safety. This wax is very flammable. Um, it will burn you. Um, it will catch on fire. Um, you want to be very careful. I can't, you know, stress this enough. You want to do this outside. Don't ever do this inside. Um, again, the wax is super hot and it will burn you. I got rubber gloves on again. Same ones I used over at the... Uh, dye station. Um, here's our set. Here's my setup right here. Um, some people might want a bigger pot. Some people might want a smaller pot. This is pure wax in this pot. Um, I don't put, I'm sure people have heard you can put water underneath it and lower the traps down and through the wax into the water and then pull them up and through. Um, the pure wax comes out much nicer. Um, trust me. Um, even with the other method I just told you, sometimes the wax flakes off. You want to use pure wax. Um, basically, you just want to lower the traps down into the wax um, until the, the steel in the trap gets as hot as the wax. Um, if you pull it out too soon, the wax will be all clumpy all over the trap. Um, you'll immediately know pulling it out that you didn't leave it in long enough. Um, when the steel gets as hot as the wax, when you pull the trap out, the wax should run off um, the trap like water. Um, you give it a really good shake, hang it up, and uh, after it dries off, then you can, you know, scrape your triggers and um, do whatever else you got. 
Um, this is what the wax looks like. Um, it's just a regular block of uh, uh, odorless trap wax. Um, I probably got, I don't know, 20 to 30 pounds of wax in my pot. Um, like I said, you could use a bigger pot, you could use a smaller pot. It all just depends on how many traps you're going to do. Um, let me put this down for a second. Uh, let's get started. We'll dye and wax, or we'll wax some traps now. I've got these one and a half coils that I pulled out, that you saw me pull out of the pot earlier. Um, they're all ready to go. They're all fully adjust. I fully adjust every one of my traps. I'm, I'm a tinkerer. I go through everything. Um, all these traps, they've all got new springs on them, new chains, swivels. Here, let me see if I can show one to you. I take all the old pan bolts out of the pans. I drill them all out and replace them with the number 10 brass uh, pan bolt and nut in the washer. It takes all the sideways play out of the pans. They're all night latched. They're all set to the same pan tension. Um, when I'm out trapping, um, I like the night latch because in the dark you can hear it. And when I'm out trapping, they all set the same. They all set. I know they're all going to work. They're all exactly the same. It doesn't matter which manufacturer it is. Um, so now, after it comes out of the dye, and uh, you hang it up, let the traps dry off. You don't necessarily have to let them get really cold. You just want the liquid off, the water off of them. If they've still got water on them when you put them in the trap, in the wax, um, the wax is going to bubble. It might splash over, and it's also not going to take to the steel. It's going to flake right off. So you go over here to your wax pot, and uh, we're running this with just a camp stove. We got propane, um, very easy. You just want to slowly lower them down and in, just like I'm doing. You don't want to splash it around or anything, because um, again, it is flammable. I use a hook, I lower them down and in, and I'll let them sit there. You want the trap to get as hot as the wax. It could take, I don't know, it could take 30 seconds, it could take three minutes, but I would say, you know, two minutes you should be good. Here, it's a little bit of a colder day. Um, we're in the low 40s right now, so I'll probably leave it in there for a little extra time. Right. This trap, has, these traps have been in here for a few minutes now. Um, I don't know, it's probably been two or three minutes. Um, the top of the wax is starting to get a little frothy and it's starting to roll around, around a little bit. That wax, that trap is as hot as the wax now. Um, I'm going to lift it out and you just pull it out really, really slow. Make sure you got rubber gloves on again because you're going to need something to grab the traps with. So you pull it out real slow and I'll let them hanging over the pot a little just for a second as you can see it's it's running right off they're not they're not clumpy they're not so you want to pull them away from the pot and then I'll take my hook off them and as you can see I use a piece of, of wire um, and you just want to get away from your stuff a little and give them a good snap a couple of good snaps and that'll knock whatever liquid is left on them then you just want to come over here We already have some traps hanging. Three up a hook. You want to come over here and then just hang them up and let them dry. You don't don't touch them. Don't you know? And that'll you know, 10, 15 minutes they'll be cool enough to the touch where you'll be able to handle them. Um, once they're dry, you can go through them. You can scrape your triggers off um, and your pan notches and uh, get them ready for the season. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for watching this. I hope it helped you a little bit. Again, my name's Andrew Huot. I'm up here at Wildlife Control Supplies, dying and waxing traps today. Um, I hope you guys learned a little bit from what I showed you. Um, I'm trying to get all these done so that I can get out trapping. Um, so we'll see you guys out on the line.